Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Uh, patch 1019 just came out. My music is very quiet. There we go. <laughs> so this is a really small patch. I've been reading it. I've been seeing what's happening with the game. Uh, so as usual, I'm going to do another run through of the patch notes this time on camera and share my thoughts on the state of the game and what I think is going to happen as a result of these patch notes. Uh, now, don't forget that I am not a challenger level player. I am not top elo. The purpose of this video is in part to get me better at analyzing the game and understanding what's happening. So it's very possible that some of these hypotheses are going to be incorrect and we will just have to see what happens as time passes or if anybody else like has better observations. <laughs> So with all those disclaimers out of the way, let's go. And we are starting with Samira. Uh, and there's actually nothing to say about Samira. She's new. I've done a full video on her. I think I got a pretty good understanding of what her strengths and weaknesses are. Uh, I do suspect she's going to be very strong on release, but then is going to settle into a more reasonable position uh, because I do not think Samira will be viable in every lane. I think she is a situational pick once her numbers come down a little bit. I do think she'll be strong though. Ari. So in the last video, uh, Ari got this this micro re rework on 1018, and I said she's probably going to become more playable. Uh, might start trending into meta, but not be dominating. I think that is what we saw. Um, I checked some stat aggregate sites, and I discovered that her win rate is healthy, but not overbearing. It's sub 50, but very close to 50. Um, with a solid pick rate, I think for a champion like this, that is skill shot reliant, that makes sense, that's understandable. They are giving her a little bit of extra power. The Foxfire cooldown, for one, that's a little extra mobility, that's a little extra farming prowess. Um, this seems like an impactful buff. Because I was saying as well, like, is the movement speed impactful on Foxfire? Um, is this going to allow her to skirt around the edge of a fight? And if the uptime is higher... Um, especially with some CDR, then I can see her becoming a much better champion without her ultimate. Now, saying much better is probably an exaggeration given the numbers on this buff, but I think combined with the 1018 notes, uh, we are going to see a little more. Akali, I don't understand. I really don't. The last change she received was like a 5 damage buff on Q. And then her E became magic damage, making it easier to itemize against her. And now she's appearing again, again in pro play. I didn't think she looked too, too impressive, but clearly my perception of this champion is wrong. And she is, like, borderline viable, even in her poor solo queue state. Now, I do think she's one of the harder champions to play in the game. Um, so her low win rate in solo queue makes sense, and I think she should have that. But, yeah, clearly I don't understand, because she's getting nerfed when I didn't expect this. Um, if that's the case, maybe she pops up in pro play, but she's still going to be like low win rate solo queue and I think that's okay. Aphelios, now people hate this champion and I think the hate was very overblown, although I will concede that he had a lot of overpowered interactions for far too long. Um, now though, I do think all of the broken interactions on Aphelios are fine. Inferno Vault is no longer one-shotting people. Calibre and Crescendum turrets are much more manageable than they used to be. Um, so, yeah, he does have room for buffs. I think he was even the lowest win rate AD carry on the last patch, and that is a damn shame, because I think he's awesome. Now, I will say, attack damage growth is going up a bit. Um, Infernum is his best gun. He very much values Infernum, and because it has a 1.1 AD ratio on its auto attacks, then any uh, damage buff will indirectly or rather disproportionately affect Infernum compared to his other guns. Um, not a big deal. Little thing. Nice thing for Aphelios. I think there's a lot that we're not going to be able to comment on a lot. Azir, yes, he's everywhere in pro play. I see him all the time. Uh, now, see, I didn't actually know about this thing on Azir's kit because I don't play Azir and haven't put a lot of time into learning the intricacies of him. So he actually gets twice as much bonus attack speed when he's got three soldiers out, it seems. Uh, the attack speed is going down a little bit. So I think that Nasher's build 
Because, you know, there's the Ludens build and there's the Nashers build. The Nashers build is probably going to be a little less powerful. Um, I definitely don't think losing a bit of bonus attack speed is going to be enough to put a zero to the meta. So he's going to be totally fine. Caitlyn's absolutely dominating. She's losing 2 AD. She's losing some attack speed growth. Now, on 10-15, I want to say, she actually gained 2 AD and some extra movement speed. And that was enough to make her overpowered. That was enough to push her to the front. This is reverting that attack damage. And actually, if you'll pay attention with the attack speed growth now, the move speed buffs were reverted. She's actually in a worse spot now than she was when she was buffed. But I'm suspecting that she was actually better than people gave her credit for when she received those buffs in the first place. Because... Although I do think that little stat changes like this can be impactful, especially on Caitlyn, where the move speed benefits her with her range, where the attack damage benefits her because her headshot scalings are so good. I, I think she, I, I, I'm hoping she's not going to be very overbearing after this. Um, the attack speed growth is nice, but you don't really pick Caitlyn for her attack speed. Um, historically, we've seen attack speed nerfs gut Caitlyn, though. I do remember Caitlyn being the lowest win rate AD carry in the game, and they halved her attack speed. So, I do want to say this is going to be impactful. But by no means enough to make her, like, a bad champion or anything. Which is fine. I like that. Aurelia, we are getting... See, they're all small changes like this. This is actually plus 50 damage on the base. Yeah, yeah, no. Plus 50 on base, plus 100 on perimeter. Um, So, ultimate gets more damage. Is it really good right now? See, this is the problem when top laners show up in the patch notes, because I don't fucking know what I'm talking about when top laners appear. <sighs> she can't be that bad. I, I think she's like... Edge of meta, but that's just talking out of my ass. I can't comment on this one, unfortunately. It does look very nice for her, though. Uh, Ivern. I don't think Ivern needs a buff. Look at this. Ivern has seen little pro, little play in pro games despite holding his own in other skill brackets. So he should theoretically be fine. I, I, I'm just, I'm worried about overbuffing underplayed champions because, like, Ivern's just not going to be a popular champion. That, that's his design. He's not going to appeal to a lot of people. But as an Ivern player myself, and hearing the opinions of other Ivern players, I don't think he's weak. I really don't think- like, he's been getting buff after buff lately. And I'm a little worried that at some point, people are gonna catch on like, holy shit, Ivern's actually pretty useful. Especially since they are already saying he's having success in other skill brackets and solo queue. So like, why force Ivern here? I think this is a dangerous change. Go good for him, good for Ivern, I don't think it's necessary. Lucian's losing some attack damage growth, but this is he maintaining his strong early game in solo lanes. Obviously, a change like this, we're not seeing him in AD carry this world's. Um, but mid top, why not? Probably still going to continue to see him. Um, Senna. Senna is one of the part of the trinity of meta AD carries right now with uh, Ash, Caitlyn, Senna. Uh, they are. I, I like that they're actually emphasizing the VAT, like the change made on minion drop chance instead of just giving us percentages so now it's once every four ways instead of every two that's a big deal senna's not constantly hitting you from the 80 carry roll um i think this is going to remove her from the top tier i i, I do think this is going to remove from the from the top tier unless fasting senna is able to return but i'm fairly confident that it's not generating enough money for like her items at the moment um, unless shorter range AD carries come back. So, she's gonna drop from top tier is what I think. Sivir's getting 5 move speed on her passive. That's kind of cool. Is this a Sivir meta? Well, Enchanters are still decent. Pantheon is here. That's not really a tank, although she can help Pantheon engage. Ah, uh, that's neat buff. This Silas buff is, like, exactly where I think he should be. Um, because his, like, like, originally, you were supposed to pick him for his ultimate, and his base kit was just too strong. So they've nerfed his base kit, um, and now they're really going into the late game ultimate fantasy again, which is actually kind of cool, because Silas, as a counterpick champion, is, like, he still works. 
And especially with Malphite being strong right now, Silas is appearing from time to time. Uh, I think we'll continue to see him as a strong counter pick, and I kind of like that for this champion. Twisted Fate is losing some movement speed. Uh, movement speed buffs usually, or movement speed buffs or nerfs are more impactful than they look always, like as a general rule. Um, in TF's case, it's going to take him like slightly more time to rotate to a lane, but he can still teleport there. I do not believe this is going to get him out of the meta, but it will at least cut his safety a little bit. Should be easy. But, but if he throws a card, he's going to die. He's kind of like that already. Safety is immediately where my mind goes. None of these changes are really much to write home about. Udyr is getting some stuff on Phoenix Dance. Nice. A AP Udyr players get some stuff to play with. Udyr's a champion we are not going to see at Worlds. Um, so I, but I do like seeing alternate playstyles get buffed. Vayne is getting extra bonus AD. Uh, when she ults. I thought this was a percentage at first for some reason, but no, it's just flat bonus AD. Um... Okay, if Caitlyn's been nerfed, it's if Senna's been nerfed, if Ash has been nerfed, maybe the AD carry meta shifts. We are seeing Samira release, but she's not available at Worlds. The Sivir buffs, the Vayne buffs. Um, hmm, Misfortune just got buffed. She might start appearing again. I'm just trying to think. Like, is there any reason for Vayne or Sivir to come back into the meta right now? Because if those three are nerfed, then who's the next tier below? But then again, I don't think Caitlyn's gone. Um... Vayne's been in the shadows as of late and hasn't been succeeding in places she traditionally has. That is true. I haven't seen a Vayne in a long time. I don't think 1080 is enough to, like, make her picked out worlds or something. This is the world's patch, of course. I think I for forgot to mention that. that. Those are all of the changes, though. Fuck, it's, it's a weird one, you know? Like, 1019 is world's patch, so everything has changed, like, just very, very slightly. And so I'm forced to make judgments based on the tiniest things, just the tiniest little details. Um, and that's, that's difficult for me, especially without having, like, stats in front of my face, using just my own experiences and what I've observed from pro play as a baseline at the moment, and my understanding of the champions, too. Things to watch, then. Let's watch Ari. She might actually start coming up. Let's watch, I mean, these two are fine for sure. Let's watch Ivern. I'm a little worried about him. I don't think he needs buffs. I think he's just underplayed. Let's watch Senna and see if she drops out of the meta. Let's watch Silas to see if we see more of him as counter picks. Um, yeah, but overall, not a super impactful patch in my head. I think this is not going to... It's not meta changing, of course, because it's World's Patch and they're being cautious. But, you know, a, a few champions have been knocked down a couple of pegs, which... I don't mind. Everything else here is really PSYOP skins and one for all and all that. Um, so yeah, that's what I think about 1019. I think really not much has changed, <laughs> but I actually wonder if this is Ivern's time to shine. I think that would be really, really funny. I would like to see Ivern at Worlds, not gonna lie. This champion is super awesome, <laughs> but I might be a little biased. Um, I'm sorry I couldn't come away with some more conclusive thoughts. That's just the nature of a patch like this, I suppose, and my current skill level. Um, although it is also a valid statement to say the game is not going to change much from 1019. So, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, if you enjoyed, leave a like, if or consider subscribing. If you think I missed some critical information, be sure to leave it in the comments, because don't forget, a few patches ago, I did completely fail to understand the impact of Shen's changes, and then he became a meta champion, like, ah. Uh. <laughs> but that's all. Take care, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Good luck on the Rift.